What is up, nerds? It is Reptile DIY here again. And today we are going to be talking about the utility pouches that you see punks wearing. And more specifically, how to make them. I'm going to go over the OG modified ammo pouches that cross punks have been wearing for the past four decades. As well as the bastard amalgamation that I grew up with in the 2000s punk scene, rightfully called the Chaos Pouch. Yeah, I know, it's a dumb name. But anyway, let's get this shit started. All right, all right, nerds. You asked for more crust pants and crust pants accessory videos, and I have answered. So today we are going to be talking about the uh, the pouches that you see punks wearing. Honestly, I'm running out of tutorial ideas, so you get what you get. Regardless, punks started wearing side pouches back in the early 80s with the rise of the anarcho punk scene. It was heavily influenced by militaristic fashion, and with the threat of World War III happening at any minute, you would be a complete dumbass to not wear an ammo pouch as a fashion accessory. Now cross punks and disc rockers quickly adopted the ammo bag side pouches and you can still see them wearing these bags 40 years later. Now skip forward to 2006, I was a wee a baby punk and the style back in my day was modifying a fanny pack with studs and patches and calling it a chaos pouch. Cringe, I know, but my mom did try to warn me that it was just a phase. Sorry, Mom. Regardless, uh, these fashion accessories not only look good, but they do hold a very valuable function for holding, uh, things. So anyway, uh, let's talk about supplies. Supplies are gonna be a very straightforward. You are going to need a second-hand fanny pack, are some uh, second-hand military surplus ammo pouches. You can get the ammo pouches at military surplus stores. Fanny packs are widely available at thrift stores for a couple dollars if you want to pay for them in the first place. Now since both these uh, styles of bags are very wildly, I'm going to list a plethora of supplies that may or may not come in handy. First and foremost, studs. When it comes to studying extremely thick leather like these vintage ammo pouches, you might need a leather spur punch to punch through this leather. On the topic of leather ammo pouches, you might want some leather dye to change the color or some leather conditioner in order to prolong the life of your leather ammo pouches. Next up, we are going to talk about patches. Now, if you're watching my videos, obviously you know that you can buy patches at shows, you can order patches online, through distros, whatever. I'm going to show you how to make patches start to finish with the freezer paper patch method. I'll go over this more in detail later, but you are going to need freezer paper, some sort of uh, device with a screen, whether that's a computer, a tablet, or you can even use a printer if you want. You're also going to need a pencil, an exacto blade, an iron, and some acrylic paint or some fabric paint. I like to use black and whatever color you want to use. Some other helpful supplies uh, might be some dental floss or some sewing thread, a needle, a pair of pliers, or pretty much anything that I pull out of my ass in this video. Trust me, plenty of things fit in there. So for the first part of this video, I'm going to show you all how to make a freezer paper stencil of any band logo that you want. Now you might think you know how to make stencils, but this is honestly the best way to make band stencils with absolutely zero artistic ability. So I'm going to take my freezer paper, shiny side down, you always want to draw on the doll side. I'm going to set that over the lip of the fanny pack and draw an outline of the fanny pack lip. Now guys, if you have a printer, you can print off your stencils. I have another video that I'm going to link down below that shows you how to print off your stencils. Please watch it I go into a lot more detail anyway I'm taking a computer or anything with a screen taking a band logo blowing it up and then I'm going to trace the logo directly onto my freezer paper on the doll side next up I'm going to tape that logo down onto a piece of cardboard and take my time cutting the logo out with a exacto blade make sure you save any inserts that you may need they will be helpful in the future here's our finished stencil shout out to stencil punks and anarcho stencilism on DeviantArt honestly guys you can can use pre-made stencils or you can make your own stencils like I said check out that other video I linked before it'll show you how to make your own stencils out of any image anyway next up we are going to take a hot iron and we are going to iron our freezer paper stencil directly onto 
the lip of that fanny pack. Now guys, you can use this method to make patches if you wanted to make a patch and then sew it onto your fanny pack. That works also. Me personally, I wanted the logo directly on the lip of that fanny pack. Alright, so make sure you take your time ironing that lip on. It definitely took a lot longer than the video editing makes you believe. And now here's something I'm going to tell y'all. When it comes to painting your logo with either fabric or acrylic paint, you always want to make sure your first layer is black. Making your first layer black allows your consecutive layers of white to adhere more properly and it stops a lot of bleeding. Shout out to the subscriber that taught me that. I'm still learning even with 18 years in the game. Anyway, lightly apply each layer and allow plenty of time in between each layer for it to dry. I did about four layers. Once it was all completely dry, I took my stencil off and this looked bad. Anyway, I took my X-Acto blade and I cut away all the excess stencils and just take your time doing this. You don't want to cut anything up, but it does look bad. Don't worry, we will fix it up. One thing that you can do if you have an excess of stencil paper still stuck is that you could run it through a wash machine on delicate with cool water. Personally, I'm just going to take a black paint pen and fill in all the edges, mistakes, and all the excess garbage that you see all over. I'm just really going to detail it all sharpen it up and make it look good. I'm also going to take the white fabric paint and clean up any mistakes and fill in any edges that I missed to make it not look like a stencil. And then I went along with a paintbrush and just outlined the outside of it to just make it look more 3D, more natural instead of some garbage stencil that I made. All right, all right. Not too bad if I do say so myself, but I know most you kids buy your shit off Etsy. Anyway, I'm going to speed run sewing a patch onto this fanny pack in case you want to learn how to do that. So I set a needle by taking about three arm lengths of dental floss or nylon wax thread. I pull it in between the middle, find the needle in the middle, double knot it off at the end. This allows your thread to be twice as strong and it just, it just works a lot better in the long run, okay? Then I take whatever patch I'm going to sew and I fold the edges so they have a hem because you always want to fold the edges of your patches. I take some safety pins, put the safety pins in as placeholders and I just sew. Pretty easy. I am using a whip stitch sewing technique. And also, if you want to sew pockets, make sure you put something inside the pocket before you sew it so you don't sew your pockets shut like a dumbass. Anyway, here's me speed running, studying the top of this fanny pack. I mean, chaos pouch. Here's me uh, finishing the rest, uh, studying this chaos pouch. Yeah, I know, a stupid name it is what it is. Pretty easy though. Now to finish up this uh, chaos pouch, we are gonna apply some buttons. You know how to put buttons on. What I like to do is take some hot glue and run it through the back edges of the lips so your buttons don't go anywhere when you're drunk and stupid and in the mosh pit. Now let's get to the good stuff of this tutorial. We are going to be talking about these ammo pouches. I have two different ammo pouches from the Cold War era. With this first brown ammo pouch, I'm actually going to take some leather dye and just dye it up because I don't like the brown, and you might not like the brown, and you might not like the gray, you might not like whatever color you have. You can put some black on it, you can put some brown on it, you can dye it whatever color you want. Applying rub on leather dye is like brushing your teeth. I can't explain it any better. Next up, we have this very old vintage hard leather ammo pouch. This leather ammo pouch, like many that you will find, is old and cracking, falling apart. The best thing you can do is take some leather conditioner or mink oil and condition the hell out of it before you even think about wearing it. Just apply the leather conditioner. Don't overthink it, it's just like brushing your teeth. This will prolong the life of any vintage cracked leather. Anyway, here's me speed running, applying studs. I'm gonna be using a leather spur punch and just applying studs. You can use whatever studs you want. I'm using some half inch uh, cone studs, I believe. They're from studsandspikes.com. I've only been ordering from studsandspikes.com since 2008. I'm not sponsored by them, but they have the best quality studs, the best prices too. You're not gonna get garbage studs where the prongs fall out and all this shit. They're the best quality, best prices, and they ship international. Studsandspikes.com, better hit me up with a promo code for this one. Anyway, like I said, speed run, we all know how to stud, and there's both of our ammo pouches all ready to go. All right, all right, nerds, uh, here is your finished chaos pouch and uh, crust punk uh, pouches. Uh, you wanted a video, you got a video. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, hit that button down below. Also, uh, check out my other DIY tutorials. I've been doing this shit for about 18 years. I know a thing or two, and I'd love to show you a thing or two. And while you're at it, check out my other crossed pants tutorials, which I will link down below. As always, see you later, nerds.